Hello everyone, welcome back to Blackjack. I'm Blackjack Aviani, and as you can see, it's a little late in the day. Uh, these go up at 10 a.m. my time. It is currently 9.03 p.m. And um, the reason for that is because my webcam has not been working. I took it to Geese Squad. We figured something out, but we still haven't gotten to the actual root of the problem, so it's gonna... I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Let's get into this, though. Magneto, Marvel's mutant master of magnetism. Yeah. Oshima, Akira's telekinetic terror of Neo Tokyo. Ooh, I don't know much about you, but ooh. Have ignited revolution not just in their worlds, but also the very mediums they exist within. Cool. These wears an iron boomstick, and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Neat. Throwing words around, huh? In the short duration of modern civilization. Likely no conflict tested humanity more than the Second World War. In the primary Marvel six Does everyday years, life count as a fact is no different does a, as a to conflict? the Eisenhart family and their only son. You may know him How as long Magnus. are they going to have that as Magneto's backstory? Him, he'd say his true because is time drift as a Jewish child in Nazi just Germany, doesn't Magneto's early life was work. well extremely traumatic. Even after eventually escaping certain death with his future wife, misfortune always followed wherever he went. Thanks to his unexpected mutation called the X gene, the mark of a superhuman. Yep. After settling down in Russia with his new family, the KG quickly move, found out about this. Given work. what happened so afterwards, they burned his house down and before. with his own daughter inside. She's on the second Literally, floor. She can jump. And killed them all. I don't blame him. I'd do that too. Too bad his wife didn't get it and ditched him, though. But that's when Magneto made a choice. Since humans hurt him his entire life, he'd do the same to them in the name of mutants everywhere. There had to At have first, been Magneto Nazis that were mutants, though, right? Charles Xavier and his fledgling Just team of by heroes. sheer odds, but right? his new friend wasn't thrilled with the idea of, uh, subjugating the human race. So right. Magneto formed his own team of mutants, the Brotherhood. Magneto can telekinetically move, bend, and reshape any metal he's aware of. Bullets, vehicles, buildings, you name it. Even himself when he manipulates cool. his personal magnetic field for flight and energy barriers. Is that how he gets his outfit to appear like that shot we just saw? It would appear at first glance. The blood in your body has iron in it. The Good. Magneto typically keeps his barriers in place at all times during combat, even when using his powers for other things. Awesome! It's a passive ability has traces of lead and mercury. Whole mountains are lined with metallic ore. The earth itself is surrounded by a literal magnetic field. Neat. So many toys for Maggie to play with. He can detect <laughs> magnetic fields at such a huge range. He can even pinpoint Earth's magnetic rays while stranded on a planet in another galaxy. And guess what? He was able to use those rays to pull himself back to Earth in a single day. His range is even cool. more remarkable than that. Did you know that in 1820, <laughs> physicist Hans Christian Orsted discovered that electric currents, like those of electrons... He looks like someone just told him some bad news. Fields. Magneto can fine-tune his control to affect these very subatomic particles. Dummy here will illustrate such a particle, with positively charged protons yep. <laughs> and negative <laughs> electrons. <sighs> My life is as meaningless as an atom is small. So what you're saying is Magneto could, like, yank one of those out. Correct. Potentially By... changing an atom's entire chemical makeup. However, yeah. neutrons do not have a charge, and without the ability to adjust those to accommodate the change in atomic mass, the atom would become unstable and... Yep. Finally! <laughs> Finally. It's just do a matter of time. That. Magneto's violent protest against humankind clashed with Xavier's peaceful reconciliation, not unlike the ideologies taught by Malcolm X and Dr. King, by whom Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were inspired. Magneto Neat. would spend most of his career pushing Xavier away to prove his philosophy's superior, which meant doing battle with Xavier's school of thought, quite literally. And Baldi's mind powers are no joke, but thanks to Magneto's psionic repelling helmet. Okay. Though his helmet is his most effective tool for shutting out psionic attacks, Xavier and other powerful telepaths have even struggled to affect his mind when he is not wearing it. Interesting. I mean, it is a helmet. It can be removed. So, yeah, Professor he would have to be touch him. extremely Magneto powerful. Cyclops earth-splitting okay. lasers absorb the power of the sun to... By the way, who should Cyclops face in death battle? I feel like even though he's the leader... Of the X-Men, he's often overlooked. Uh, sorry, to miniaturize neuron... 
Neutron Star Bullet, Resist Mental Attacks, Professor X, and Emma Frost. Okay, now remember how my knowledge of X-Men is basically just the 90s cartoon and a couple of the movies? Um, I do remember that Emma Frost, it, she's like, is she more powerful than Professor X? She's near that level, but I forget if it's above or below. Defeated X-Men, Avengers, Red Skull, and Apocalypse. Does Red Skull have any actual abilities other than apparently an incredibly long lifespan? <laughs> or is that just comic book things? Does he not even have an incredibly long lifespan? <laughs> okay, flew between galaxies in a short time frame. Punched Iron Man with the force of a sun. Overpowered Hercules and Thor's hammer. He's ripped apart an imaginary skeleton. The Breakword Bullet. That's the one I don't really know much about. Battle Iron Man ripped the adamantium skeleton out of Wolverine's body and even taken on Hercules himself. Neat. You know, the Greek legend? Zero to hero? The guy who held up the skies of Olympus for Atlas? That Hercules. <laughs> Seems sensible. Won't be a moment. <laughs> used the Earth's magnetic field to overwhelm the Phoenix Force, which can effortlessly destroy mm. planets, let alone far more. Well, the Phoenix f full power is far greater than just planet level. She'd been weakened prior to Magneto defeating her and thus, and is beyond him at her full strength. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Who would Phoenix fight in death battle? Or hell, if he really wanted to, Magneto could totally just fling the earth off its axis. It's Dude. entirely possible he may have eventually resorted to just that. Over Maybe? time, it became clear Magneto's war was doing far more harm than good for his fellow mutants. However, well intended, okay, I remember that cartoon too, but Luckily, he not later as much. realized he was going a bit overboard and began reevaluating his perspective. Good for you, Mags. It's really <laughs> yeah. tough to recognize when you're the Betty. It took time and patience, not just from Magneto, but also from his peers. <laughs> Yet eventually, his path was completely changed. He even became a leader for Xavier's X Men. But don't let his new goody two shoes ways fool you. Whenever there's a threat to mutants, <laughs> you can bet Magneto will be there to annihilate it. Forever. By any means necessary. Yeah. This episode of Death Battle oh, is sponsored by. Crack it. No, no. There's it. Okay. Over 30 years ago, a new type of bomb was set off over Tokyo. And nine hours later, began the Third World War. Welcome to 2030, or 2019 if you're watching the anime. The buildings okay. are taller, the motorcycles are cooler, and the future is brighter. Mm. No, wait, not really. If you find yourself <laughs> in the capsule gang, you'll meet Jotaro Kanada, who's like your textbook anime Chad. Gets the ladies, beats the baddies, and cops the sweetest rigs. Man, I need to get me one of those. And then there's the little brother of the group, Kanada's best friend, Tetsuo Shima. He's... Well, the exact opposite. Yeah. A total wimp. As a kid, Tetsuo in his college thesis forehead got bullied for being... Okay, he's 19. He's 5'4", 100... He's a light little boy. My goodness. Uh, Esper number 41. ex ex Clown? Gang? Leader? Okay, I'm just imagining the Jokers from Batman Beyond, you know? You know when that's what I'm imagining, right? Director of the illustrious Great the Tokyo Empire. All right. Big Bro Is he still 19 when he does that? Eventually, the two went to vocational school together and formed the Capsules. But Tetsuo was never satisfied with Kanada being the leader of the pack. Tetsuo desired more than anything to be top dog. Oh, I can yeah. see that monkey's paw curling in my mind. Or that kid walking down the street. Shit! Just to watch out! You're gonna... That definitely should have killed him. But since it didn't, Tetsuo earned himself a ticket to military confinement. Turns out they had an under-the-table program for developing child super weapons. In the same yeah, of course program they did. that backfired and jump-started the war, Tetsuo became Japan's Esper number 41. He may not have been a natural with bikes, baddies, or babes, but this telekinesis stuff hit different. He walked out of that hospital ward effortlessly flying, reading minds, and blending people into strawberry jellies. Tetsuo got what he wanted, power, along with the hunger for more of it. A hunger that yep. used to only be satiated with drugs. And not just any gateway drug, pills so potent that a single gram of the stuff could kill you. 
So I see. pretty bad. Kinda reminds me of college days. That guy must have been no, one of the clowns. He seemed to have Tetsuo's absolutely main face ability on him. is his constantly increasing psionic energy, growing more and more powerful over time. This is cool. due to Tetsuo's link to quote the memories of the universe end quote. It's weird. Either way, Tetsuo leveled up from lame gangbuster. Okay, Esper's take advantage of the flow of universal energy created by the Big Bang. Its destructive nature is in part due to promoting humanity's evolution. Just humanity's evolution? Or evolution in general? Like the concept. This guy is a walking natural disaster. His telekinesis can shake the planet, easily cause earthquakes over a dozen miles below the surface. He can summon psychic barriers for defense and crush foes with friggin' gravity wells. He can Neat. dart around as a literal bolt of lightning or even teleport in an instant. Tetsuo's telekinesis can be so precise he can target and obliterate specific parts of the body. He can heal cool, severe wounds cool. quickly, but even after losing a whole limb, he can craft a new one using whatever nearby materials he wants. Cool. With these powers, Top Dog Canada didn't matter anymore. Who needed his approval? Tetsuo tasted that good shit and he was hooked. And when he found out another S bird named Akira could deal him even more power, he rampaged through Tokyo to find him. Cool. And this is where versions mm. of the story differ. Oh, now, interesting. Spoilers ahoy! You may be familiar with the 1988 animation, where Akira had been dissected for research. However, in the I original see, manga, but was still able to hold together a consciousness, huh? Akira is not only alive, but even more powerful. Once that little runt nuked Tokyo, Tetsuo would erect the Great Tokyo Empire with Akira and himself as its leaders. But he ended up just abusing the position for endless sex <laughs> and inflating his ego. Yeah. With Canada's rebellion at his front door, Tetsuo took a turn for the worse. He had to fight. Tetsuo's defeated other powerful- Okay. Caused the 8.5 magnitude earthquake. SOL satellite? The one from Mystery Science Theater? <laughs> Cratered the moon, can destroy Earth a hundred times over. Dodge light speed lasers. Leap to the moon faster than sight. Goodness gracious. Uh, survive multiple nuclear blasts. Created K, Lady, Miyako, and the US Navy fleet. Okay. US Navy fleet, I know. Okay, I don't know who K or Lady Miyako are. Um, uh, still seems like, uh, like Magneto would have to be faster. Uh, leaping to the moon faster than sight is incredibly impressive, of course, and, you know, violates the laws of physics. But if Magneto is able to move between solar systems in less than a day, that's moving even faster than that. Flespers dodged light speed lasers and jumped to the moon faster than anyone could blink, and then punched a big old hole in it. Yeah. You ask, Boomstick, wouldn't that mess up gravity on Earth? Yes. You would be right, because it totally did. Awesome. Screwed the planet, I guess. Stupid moon. Which brings us to Tetsuo's. Okay, given the small crater Tetsuo left on the ground, he did not teleport to the moon. He must have traveled there in about 13 milliseconds, the image, image processing speed for a human. Awesome. Also, when are we going to get Asura in death battle? I thought he was going to fight Broly, but no. It's folly. His abuse of his powers spiraled until he lost control. Unfortunately for Kanada's rebellion, this did not make Tetsuo an easier enemy to confront. Exactly opposite, in fact, has Tetsuo painfully mutated into an unstoppable behemoth. Yep, Dang. that's not totally disturbing at all. I'm happy to say the manga's version is even more disturbing. Nice. I mean, I know babies can be monsters, but that's a whole nother level. Which is pain incarnate. I can relate. Another esper described Tetsuo's struggle as ego death, which has multiple definitions, but in this case is likely symbolic of the version attributed to drug use. Yeah, it's described as a shedding of one's own identity, like how LSD can Let's emulate see. a wild out-of-body experience and you come back with a new perspective. Though this is maybe a little more extreme. In yes, fact, I would think so. Tetsuo was shedding his human body to play with the powers of a god. I wish I First I thought that was from Adventure body. Time, but... But in this case, Tetsuo going full out of body meant becoming a mound of raw, ever-expanding energy. Which almost nuked Tokyo yep. all over again. And those explosions are not normal. I would know. Top scientists in both the manga and animated versions describe these explosions as births of a new universe. 
Given its properties of nuclear fusion and proton collapse, Tetsuo's mutated form was. The one with the cigarette looks like they don't quite believe it. Bang. Like, hell you know, the yeah. Thing that started uh -huh. our whole universe? Right. In the manga, it Either that or it just doesn't matter. And their abilities once and for all. A testament that humankind is unsuited to wield the powers of the divine. Though the anime is even more trippy. Thanks to Akira and his buddies, Tetsuo got so high on ego death, he ascended time space to become god of a new universe. Uh, Tetsuo obtaining omniscience is not canon in the original manga and cannot be applied to an arbitrary level of power. Kind, kind of worth it, right? And yet, Canada kept his empire up in his honor, now as the great Akira Empire. Ironically, in death, Tetsuo finally received the attention he so desperately craved. Okay, so... Okay. I'm gonna go Magneto. Because he can control his powers. Seems a lot more than that. Everyone uh, has been talking about how it would come down to control. They're saying even if Tetsuo is capable of defeating Magneto, then, like, even if he has the power to do so, he doesn't have the control necessary. And <laughs> it seems like adhering everything to himself is going to make himself a bigger target. Because you see, like, everything was going into when his arm was going wobbly, right? And then, like, when he was turning into the giant blob, it just seemed like everything was, like, he was merging with everything. And I know that's probably not really what was happening, but it's definitely, like, I don't know. But even then, it seems like surface area alone isn't going to be enough, or mass alone isn't going to be um, the deciding factor. It's just Magneto <laughs> has control. He knows what to do. Oh, by the way. Um, I want to get this out of the way. Um, I have not been spoiled on the next battle. However, I did see a bunch of people saying it is wow. <laughs> no one actually said what it was because it was unmarked. And everyone was just wow. However, there was a comment that led me to believe it may involve Gurren Lagann. I don't know for sure. I am just speculating. It may have been someone just blasting their mouth. I don't know. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go Magneto. It's time for a, a death, death battle. battle! I gotta Here say though, I do. Japan, fail to recognize. I do think um, Tetsu would be able to beat Mewtwo, which is uh, one of the other characters I saw bandied about for him. Our superiority. Wrong country, Grandpa! You're an Akira turf now! <laughs> no? You're dead meat! Yeah, there's the throwing words around. Someone get a translation in there for me? Fit the show? The hell are you calling child? I make the rules around here. You're wasting my time. I'm really liking the voices. Well, I mean, I'm liking both the voices. The master of magnetism. But I'm especially liking how Magneto sounds familiar. You know what I mean? Isn't that what you were already trying to do? Did you just headbutt that? Uh, 
Oh yeah, Earth is fucked. Oh, destroyed his helmet. I believe I've had enough tantrums to last a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least the city is fucked. Let's be honest with ourselves. Oh, he's overpowering him? Oh, he hears the underlying voice. Oh, there's the magnets from the blood. Well, what's this? Is it, oh, he's self-destructing. Can he really burst out of him his own form like that? Thank you. Ah. You are welcome. Let's say nothing of the entire rest of the city, you know. Esoteric telekinesis. Okay, stronger, faster, tougher. Magnesis countered Tetsuo's offensive. Magnetic senses countered Tetsuo's mobility. However, inferior healing options and Tetsuo could eventually grow more powerful. Uh, Tetsuo could kill Magneto without his shield. Telekinesis had a brighter range of effect. Though his application was less versatile, overexertion risked bodily harm. This is another bizarre ability, uh, for less combat and tactical pause, experience, yes. But the master yes. of magnetism had greater control over his foe. The numbers don't lie. Tetsuo cratering the moon was insane, but yeah. Magneto punched Iron Man with the force of the sun. And while Tetsuo jumped all the way to the moon, Magneto couldn't move across galaxies. Yeah. Against Tetsuo in his human form, Magneto obviously... Okay. Without his barriers, Tetsuo was easily powerful enough to kill Magneto, however those barriers could withstand attacks from Thor and Hercules, who are far stronger than Tetsuo. That makes sense. In power and speed. But and it's a passive effect, matter. as we know. With his precise telekinesis, Tetsuo could just target Magneto's organs. I just realized that's like yes, but the, had the arm for formal alchemist. There are very few substances on Earth that lack any metallic or magnetic component, and Magneto yeah. is very creative with his powers, which he could use to predict Tetsuo's teleportation and even shut down his telekinesis. And his scraps with Xavier prove he could handle Tetsuo's mess. Okay, given that Tetsuo was put out of commission after attempting to read Akira's mind. It's likely that with Magneto's greater rate abilities, the same would happen here. Ah, okay, so we do have an explanation for that. With his head, the biggest challenge for Magneto was when Tetsuo's gross mutated power came into play. Yep. Especially given how the detonations from this form were compared to that of a Big Bang. Although the Can he really pry himself out of that, though? In truth, the Big Bang was a sudden expansion of matter on a universal scale, whereas Tetsuo's mm. explosions are more akin to nuclear blasts. Yeah, really intentional very slow the symbolism of the Akira story. The whole creating an alternate universe Extremely bit wasn't slow. even part of the original material, so we can't exactly call it canon. But let's just say the comparison wasn't superfluous. Let's say Tetsuo did in fact cause a Big Bang capable of creating or destroying an entire universe, alternate or otherwise. Turns out Magneto had the tools to stop that too. Helmet Head could overpower Hercules, who was strong enough to hold up the skies of Olympus, which is literally heaven and an alternate universe. This doesn't necessarily mean Magneto could easily destroy a universe with the snap of his fingers, but it does prove he can match a similar level of power. And Neat. context is everything. Yeah. Tetsuo's Big Bang eruption specifically exhibited proton collapse, meaning its atomic structure oh, was primarily okay. an unstable mess of neutrons and electrons. And yep. Magneto has detected and commanded unstable electrons before. This means Magneto had every means available to take control over this Big Bang. Nice. And I thought he could just move some metal around. It's like the question <laughs> I mean, posed by some of the greatest kind of, of our that time. is just it, right? Fucking magnets. How do they even work? 
Magneto's astonishing power and intelligent control over all things magnetism triumphed in the end. Tetsuo pushed his luck, but didn't have the metal to pull off the win. The winner <laughs> is Magneto. <sighs> all right, good job, good job. Thank you for watching this episode. Okay, if well, you'd like see, to... um, Edward Bosco and Joshua Walters were the voice actors for today. Directly support the whole death awesome, team. awesome. Click that join button and consider becoming a member. Now let's see what we've got going on here. Hope you like the next one. Hercules versus Sun Wukong? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> I was wondering if they would ever do any, like, mythic... I mean, you know, obviously over there you see we've had Thor, but it's, it's comic book Thor. It's not Thor Thor, you know? So Hercules versus Sun Wukong is going to be really interesting. That's going to be fascinating. Hmm. That, that, that is, that is wow. That does, that does live up to the, I don't, I, I don't know if they were doing the hand signals. They just wrote it in all caps. Wow. <laughs> that is going to be a really, really cool fight. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I I know they, they worked with um I mean obviously they've worked with Team Four Star and they worked with they are owned by Rooster Teeth. So they have two versions two fictional versions well you know what I mean. Two characters based off of Sun Wukong. And they're not going to get either one of them to do the, the voice. Uh, if you're wondering, I mean, obviously TFS would be Goku, but um, uh, in Ruby, there's a Sun Wukong um, character as well. Which, when I watched Ruby, I don't think I actually saw up to him. But that's going to be really interesting. Hmm. So today's battle, like I said, I figured Magneto was going to win. Um, control was indeed a factor. Um, but um, a lot of the stuff that was happening, I wasn't quite clear on it as far as the animation. But I also have a feeling that there wouldn't really be a clear way to have some of those elements um I know, I know that's why a certain type of character archetype exists, like the Dr. Watson sort or the uh, the crowd in an action, well, not, not every action film, but a lot of types where they're explaining, oh no, they're using such and such. <laughs> Though now I'm just remembering that scene in Digimon where there's these huge monsters clashing in the waterway and these two bored businessmen are sitting at a bench nearby. Uh, I must be filming an action movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I thought it was an interesting battle. Um, why would they change so much? Is, is it because the manga is so much longer and they had to cut it down for the movie? I always wonder that, like, when something deviates so far from its source material. Obviously, you can't make an exact one-to-one, -one, but um, it, when something, like, the very basis of things, that just kind of, I don't know, I'd be insulted as an author. <laughs> That's why when I do my original story and sell it to a studio, I'm going to make sure that I'm part of the process. Every change has to be run by me. I have to approve the scripts. Everything like that. And if a studio doesn't let me do that, I do not sell to that studio. I would just think it would be obvious. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this episode. Um, I, I, they are eventually going to have to change Magneto's backstory, though. Just because of the passage of time. I mean, as it is... He'd already have to be nearly a hundred. And like, if he was an extremely small child, he'd be like maybe 
almost 90. But, you know, he's always been portrayed as being like 50s, 60s. And it just doesn't work anymore. So they'd have to come up with... <laughs> they'd have to do like a sliding scale or something. And unfortunately, you know, it would just... The passage of time makes fools of us all. I'm just... That's all that it really comes down to. The passage of time and comic books really don't mash up very well. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm just glad this could work. I'm glad I could... What? I'm getting weird noises in my headphones right now. I don't know if it's just maybe someone down the block is playing some music with low bass and I'm just interpreting it as being from my headphones because that's what I have on. Maybe it's something like I can hear my parents watching TV and all I can hear is dialogue. Maybe there's some like low bass noises in the background that I'm just picking up some, not really subconsciously, suborally? I, I don't know. Okay, I gotta get these things off me then. <laughs> I guess I'll see you guys in two weeks for Hercules versus Sun Wukong. Uh, I, I think we can agree this battle is going to be legendary.